Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Dr. Nasser Shake Show. I'm your host, Dr. Nasser, and what do we have on tap for you today, folks? Well, I just happened to find this channel a few weeks ago, The Midas Touch. I have been watching their content, and I have been wanting to do a reaction video to them because let me tell you something, folks. 99% of what they believe in, what they want to disseminate out his information, their views. I mean, we're like a totally different, we're like worlds apart, baby. We're like worlds apart. But I respect their opinions. I respect their journalist, their journalism. Um, but I thought it would be fun, at least for me, to do a reaction video because they had a uh, one of their community members. Her name is Sue. She's been with them from the beginning. I think they've been around for almost 11 or 12 years now, I believe. And they've got almost a million subscribers. So they're a pretty damn big channel. And um, like I said, it's, I just wanted, it seemed like they were making such a big deal about this that they were absolutely stunned. They were stunned that this question came about. And I just figured, boy, you know what? If you're going to be stunned by a question uh, after 11 or 12 years, Wow, that must be one hell of a question that you came up with, right? And so I just thought that I just had to react to it. So we're going to play this. We're going to play clips throughout. We're going to get to one of their Patreon members or whatever name is Sue. And I'm just going to go ahead and react to whatever I feel needs reacting to, okay? So let's go ahead. Let's start that. But before we do, if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, do so right now. Hit that notification bell. Like, share, and follow us. Put your comments below. Really be interested to see what you guys think about this. Let's go to Ben from the Midas Touch right now. I'm Ben Micellis from the Midas Touch Network. Over this past weekend, we held a meetup with our Patreon uh, supporters. It was an exclusive Zoom where anyone who signed up on our Patreon website, our patrons, could join the Zoom, could meet us, and could ask us any question at all. We've been doing this each and every month now. We will continue to do it each and every month. I want to show you an exchange, though, that I had with one of our patrons. Her name is Sue, and she asked such an incredible question. And the way she articulated the pro-democracy messaging here left me and my brothers so impressed that I asked her, I said, Sue, can we share this exchange with all of our Midas Mighty, with everyone in the YouTube community and everybody in the Twitter community and everyone in our TikTok community? I just want everybody to see the point we've always made here on the Midas Touch Network, that you are the solution, that you hold the key to ensuring the survival and protection of the pro-democracy community against the attacks by the right-wing MAGA Republicans. So I want to show you this exchange right now that I had with our patron, Sue. But before doing that... So we're going to get to Sue in just a few seconds. But, you know, right at the very end, he called out the MAGA Americans, right? The MAGA people. So, hey... I have to respond to that, right? I mean, we're a threat to democracy. We're a threat to the republic. Isn't that what we say about the liberals, about the leftists, about the Democrats, about the progressives? I guess so. Fair is fair, right? It's fair game. Call each other out. Let the battle of ideas in the political arena, and let's agree to disagree. Let's agree where we can agree. We'll disagree where we disagree. Let's get to Sue right now second message as well as the Republicans, because as much as I despise the whole MAGA cult, <laughs> got to give it to them. They know how to message and we don't. Now, Tucker Thank is you. apparently Monday and Tuesday night, he's already advertising that he's going to release the truth because he has these J6 tapes, right? Mm. Who knows what's going to come out Monday and Tuesday? So he well, one thing that could come out is the thing that I don't understand here and Ben and Sue and people at the Midas Touch and anywhere else in the comments, you know, put down. Why are you guys so afraid of the January 6th tapes? I would have wanted them out regardless. They should be. They're not the government tapes. They're the people's tapes. 
we the people need to show them and let this is the right the idiomatic expression let the chips fall where they fall if you can actually show show us everything i'm i'm hey keep it an open book where people did things that were absolutely illegal and shouldn't have been doing if they were doing something hey prosecute them full extent of the law all right but don't just do this thing where you know what I mean, what we've been hearing where there's these kangaroo courts going on and people are being stuck in jail for just basically, you know, in the halls of Congress. Going to the bathroom. And I don't mean just anywhere. They were in the bathroom. But what, you can't be in the bathroom? You're going to be arrested for being in the bathroom? I mean, this is just ridiculous. So I don't understand this thing. The reason why people like Sue and Ben and those on the left and liberals... Why they're upset is because now there is a chance that we can basically see the other side because we've only been shown the pictures that they want us to see, right? That's it. The footage that they want to see, the narrative that they want to put out. This was an insurrection. That's what it was. Oh, yeah, this was a mutiny, an insurrection. They were just going to go and it was going to thwart democracy and the republic for which it stands. One nation under God, indivisible, and liberty and justice for all. That was all going to freaking collapse. Because, a few, because some people decided to what? Roam the halls of Congress. What I'd like to know is when you're seeing, for example, um, police there, officers there, and they're showing people around. They're leading them through the rooms. And they're basically telling them, hey, you know what? Take a look at this statue over here. Take a look at this painting over here. Isn't this wonderful? Hey, how you doing, buddy? And you're going, wait a minute. What, is, what are the police, what are the officers doing, okay, leading people around? Show and tell? And he goes, let's get back to Sue. Even though all the bad things Fox did, people are going to put that in the background. They're going to say, oh. Oh, listen, and how is he going to edit it? Of course he's going to message it to be to, to suck these people back in. Who are we going to get to counter this? And when are, well, we've been saying this for years. Because at the reality, if you break all this down, you take away the... Who are you going to counter this with? How about MSLSD, the delusional network? How about NBC, never been conservative? How about ABC, anything but conservative or the alternate broadcasting corporation? How about the Cabal Broadcasting Corporation, CBS? What about the other alphabet networks? What about the media mafia cartel? What about them? You don't think they're editing things? But it's a videotape. We'll be able to see for ourselves. You don't have to edit videotape. It's videotape. They're not going to scrub the tape and put some other pictures behind it inside there. culture war. What you want to say is, listen, people, you may not approve of gay marriage. Doesn't matter. Don't get married to, to a gay person. Let the people <laughs> do whatever they want to do, right? Go and live your life. But what does matter to you, to me, to the person next door is having affordable health care, going to the grocery store and being able to, to stand online and buy something. You know, I'm, I'm fortunate. I am in a situation where I can afford to do that. But what about the people who can't? What about the people who have to make a decision of whether they can put gas in their car or buy food for their family? That is what you should be looking at a politician to do for you. Not worrying about if there's going to be drag hour at the library. What's the problem with that? You don't want to go and see it? Don't take your kids. Mm -hmm. Other than that, move on. Everybody should have an individual choice of what they want to go to see and what they don't want to see. But let's really break it down to, am I going to have my social security there when I'm ready to retire? Am I going to have affordable health care if I get sick? Am I going to be able to afford to put food on the table for my children? Will I have a job? That's where the Democrats fall short and don't get out there and message. Because if you take everything else away, that's really what's important to people. Okay. 
let's just go break that thing down a little bit when she was talking about that. First, she talked about, you know, gay marriage, right? If you don't want to worry about gay marriage, then don't go marry a gay person, you know? Don't get married to one. Don't be gay or whatever. And my thing to Sue is, listen, I could care less whether people, you know, you want to get married to a, a guy wants to marry a guy, a girl wants to marry a girl, you want to be gay, lesbian, bisexual, whatever. That's perfectly fine. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about that your side, the liberal side, the leftist side, the democratic side, the progressive side, I would probably say the Midas touch side. You guys want to force that onto us to make us basically say, you know what, if you don't accept it, then guess what? We're going to force you to accept it. That's where we draw the line. We don't want to be forced into accepting it. Period. Don't tell us who we need, you know, what pronouns we have to use, whether we have to accept it. That's not what we want. When you guys force this issue upon us and say you've got to accept it, in your church, if your church doesn't accept it, or your synagogue doesn't accept it, or your mosque doesn't accept it, then we're going to hurt you with the power of government. And we're going to bring down the state on you. We're going to make it against the law. We're going to punish you. That's what you guys want to do. You guys don't want diversity of thought. You don't want diversity of opinion. Oh, you do? Only when that diversity of thought and diversity of opinion, guess what? Follows what you guys want, what your narrative wants. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about that we would like government to stay out of these things and stop utilizing and weaponizing and politicizing the agencies in government to go after the people that are basically saying, guess what? Fine, you want to do it. You talked about drag queen story hours, Sue did. The library public entity wants to have drag queen story hour. Okay, fine. If some parent wants to take their child two, three, four, five, six, whatever it is, to drag queen story hour, perfectly fine. I don't agree with it. I would rather not have it. But I'm not going to go pick it outside a library to say, you know, stop it. But what I do, but what I would want to do, no, is that when if somebody wants to have a reading hour there of a decent children's book that doesn't do any, that doesn't have any sexualization in it, no sexual content, nothing like that. Let's say could be a Christian book. Somebody who's a Christian reading. Somebody wants to read a book, a book on a Muslim book, a Jewish book, a Hindu book, or they want to just read a book on you know, traditional weddings, traditional marriage, or whatever it is. And now they're stopped from doing that at a library. That's where I basically say, okay, hypocrisy. It's a public library. Why aren't you allowing me to read a book on a marriage between, you know, a, a, a heterosexual marriage? A book on that. But no, you're going to let them read a book on five people getting married to a cow and a guy and a girl and an animal and a sheep. What? What? So that's that's okay. No. And then we're not talking. We're talking. Then the other thing in terms of this thing too, Sue and Ben and all you others out there. Other another thing is um, you're talking about okay with drag queen hour in schools, for example. Why is it they're sexualizing children in schools? And many times they're having these drag queen story hours, drag performers, men dressed in clothes, scantily clothed, whatever, doing all types of things, sexual gyrations or whatever. And the school district and the principal and the teachers are all yucking it up and thinking that's perfectly fine. But nobody had the decency to ask the parents to sign a piece of paper saying that it was okay for their child to be in that, um, uh, you know, in that place, in that situation with adults inappropriately dressed, doing inappropriate things suggestive of sexuality, but nobody asked the parents to say, is that okay for my child to participate? Did a letter go home? Did an email go that this is what we're going to do? No. 
because they don't want to, they know what's going to happen if they ask the parents. And this crosses lines. Most Democrat parents don't want their kids sexualized in the school. Most independent parents don't want their kids sexualized in the school. Most Republican parents don't want their kids sexualized in the school. Conservatives don't. Most liberals don't. Most Hindus don't. Most Muslims don't. Most Christians don't. Most, you know, most people don't. There are some people that do that's a topic for another day. There are some parents, you know what? Okay, fine. Fine. Let them do it. But first of all, why do we have to have it in the school? What's the reason for that? And then you're talking about, you know, what messaging? The Democrats' message, absolutely unbelievable. That's why we're in the mess. That's why, that's why all these things are happening. The culture wars are basically being done because the Democrats are forcing all this stuff that we think is crap, which is antisocial, anti, it's deviant behavior. We don't want it, but you know what? And if it is out there, okay, then you want to force it on us in areas where we don't want it being forced on. You want to do it in the public arena? Okay, fine. But we're talking about in schools with young children or whatever. So this was the big question. And then she's talking about, you know, everybody wants food on the table. Everybody wants to have, um, uh, uh, what was she saying? Oh, health care. Everybody's looking to, you know, she goes, oh, I can afford it. So I'm in a better position than others. There are safety nets out there. There is Medicare. There is Medicaid. And look, not everybody, in, in terms of this, it's not, it's, it, what we talk about is, is there an equality of opportunity? And there is. Do we want to have equality of outcome? It's never going to be. Freedom and liberty, if you decide that, that you want equality to be there for everybody, freedom and liberty are gone. You can't have freedom and liberty and equality. It's not going to work. Some people are going to have, some people are going to have not. And then you get the government involved in this thing here, and I'll tell you what, the have-nots become a whole lot bigger. Government stays out of the damn picture. People will thrive. You do need a safety net. We do have trillions of dollars in safety net but we also have billions and billions of dollars of wastage within those safety nets as well health care we can talk about that that's another topic and whatever but i mean for her to basically say and I, I thank you for giving us credit but i look at our side and are you kidding me our messaging sucks i think the republican i mean i'm a conservative an america first conservative so I don't know what the Republicans are. We're not rhinos. We're not the Mitch McConnells. We're not the um, uh, um, Senator, oh, I can't think of his name right now. Oh. Lindsey Graham. We're not, you know, the Lindsey Grahams of the world. Okay, we're not the Mark Rubios. We're not the elite establishment. That's not who we are. We're the conservative movement, the conservative party or the conservative community, let's say, like you that might with a conservative community within the Republican tent. And what are we, you know, faith, family, freedom. That's what we're looking for. Life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness. Leave us alone. That's what we're talking about. Anyways, we're gonna go to another clip where we're gonna bring Ben back. He's gonna respond a little bit to what Sue said, and I'm gonna respond to what Ben is saying, and we're gonna wind it all up all right so let's go to that cut right now large networks and the question is why and the answer is for everything you just said because people are tired of getting a diet of bullshit and they yeah. want the truth they want to be talked to like human beings with civility and decency and intelligence people want to be treated intelligently and on the one hand fox injecting disinformation on the other hand large media networks both sizing the issues that by the time you're done with the four minutes before they go to an ad, you right. watch it and you go, what the heck was this? The angry, it's two angry people. I don't even know what the issue is. Mm -hmm. So reframing the way the media is done is now our life's mission. So right. one of the things are who are going to be those messengers. I would say that's the goal of 
So basically, what did he just finish, you know, talking about here? He was talking about that, um, uh, I put some notes down here. He was basically saying that Fox and disinformation, right? It's only Fox that putting out the disinformation. And I think he alluded to the other corporate brands, but he didn't name them. So look, folks, it's on both sides. These are all elitist institutions, and they all have their narrative. They all want to do what they want to do. If you take a look at Murdoch and the Koch brothers and those people on Fox, you're absolutely right. I'm not a, you know, I'll watch all of them to get news and information and then basically see uh, where we can, um, is there any points of agreement? Very rarely. But to basically say that Fox is completely putting out disinformation without equally basically saying, and then naming those others, not just saying, you know, digital media, what are you talking about? Let's call them out by name. Fox has a narrative. Yes. Do they put out propaganda on their side? Absolutely. Are they falsifying things? You know what? When they do the reporting, there's many times where absolutely Fox has, you know, done some things that are absolutely blatantly what I call dishonest. And they've got people at Fox that are working that are moderates and progressives and rhinos. And they've got a few of them, okay, that I would call conservatives. They've got a few that I would call populists. But then remember, when you're talking about Tucker Carlson, when you're talking about Sean Hannity, when you're talking about Laura Ingram, right, these are opinionated programs. These are pundits that are talking and they are basically giving their opinion on matters, bringing up stories, and it's their opinion. They want to frame it in a certain way, they frame it in a certain way. You decide to listen to it, you do your due diligence, you do your research, you find out they're you know, telling you pretty much the straight and narrow. Okay, fine. They do a piece, you do some information, some background on it, you do your due diligence, and you find out that they're full of crap. All right, then. You call it out. And guess what, folks? Just like they did, okay, in the elections when they were talking about Arizona being... Uh, we Let's not even rehash that thing or whatever. But let's not forget MSNBC. If you're talking... If Fox is doing it, and let's say you think Fox is doing it at... And for you guys out there, if you think Fox is doing like 80 90%, well, guess what? The left-wing media, they've got to be doing it 200%. Okay? A fact is a fact. There's so much disinformation, so much manipulation, so much with this narrative. There's just not enough time. We're going to have to do extra videos to talk about how that thing, how the narrative changes depending upon how they want it to be, you know, put out to their community put out to everybody else out there. And I could go, Black Lives Matter, you know, the LGBTQ, the transgender movement, um, you know, children, uh, you know, being, um, you know, sexual, you know, with uh, given sex hormones. Um, all of this stuff, folks, falls under this thing that he's talking about where this disinformation campaign is going on. And it's on... It's throughout digital media complex throughout, but the majority is coming from the left. Let's go to another clip of Ben addressing this question that stunned everybody at Midas. So now you see why I wanted to show you that. That was an incredible exchange. I want to thank Sue. I want to thank every. Anyway, let's just continue with this thing here. Um, you know, from Sue, I just have to say from God's lips. I mean, from your lips to God's ears, and I don't know. Maybe uh, people with the Midas touch, who knows? I don't know where your guy's stance is on the whole God thing and religion or whatever. But if you're basically saying that the Republicans' messaging, the Republicans' messaging is better than the Democrats, I don't know what you're talking about. I really don't. The midterms, our messaging, you know, with... Uh, you know, looking at it in terms of with Roe v. Wade, you guys did a fan, the, the left did a fantastic job with ginning up the uh, anger, uh, you know, and the hate and the, you know, going against, um, you know, the Republicans in that. And especially by doing it with single 
women and single women who were not uh, obviously did not want to get married. And when you ginned up that type of, um, you know, I guess uh, anger, it, it, it worked in those states. It, it worked in those states where it was a close, um, you know, battle between a Republican and a Democrat. Where are we winning the battle of the words on the cultural side and everything right now? The only thing that I can think of right now is the only person who's doing it is President Trump whenever he's out, um, you know, on tour, basically, when he's at his events and the few things that he puts out, okay, on social media and what we're seeing from Governor Ron DeSantis down in Florida. I'm trying to think of anybody else on the Republican side that you would even basically venture to say conservative. And Trump, by no means, is a conservative. I think he's a pragmatist. I call him a pragservative, pragmatic conservative. But other than that, I don't see it coming from anywhere. You know, now you are seeing it coming from a few people in the House, you know, the Freedom Caucus and others. But as far as just overwhelmingly coming out, the only person who's going to be able to do this is going to be Donald Trump. That's it. He's going to be the one that's going to have to carry everything for us into 2024. And that's all that on my side, you know, we can hope for. Anyways, folks, we hope you uh, enjoyed this here. Like I said before, we have to agree to disagree with our friends over at the Midas Touch. Um, we are so completely opposite in our views and outlook and where we want America to go and the direction and all of that. But anyways, it's fun. I enjoy doing this here. I'm going to take a look at some of their other videos, do some more reactions. Uh, just you know, look at our playlist when you check us out. And with that, I'll let you know that you have been watching the Dr. Nasser Shake Show. I've been your host. My name is Dr. Nasser. Haven't done so, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, like, share, and follow us. And I'll leave you with my final point, which is when you're right, you're right. And when you're left, you're wrong, like the people at the Midas Touch. Anyways, folks, take care and stay safe.